please give it up for Sandeep Rao. What's going on, Bangalore? Wow. Jesus Christ. We're here live at the Bangalore International Center, all the way in Dumlur. Ah. <laughs> Perry International. Oh. <laughs> That's called uh, demonetization. You've got to fix a nice auditorium within budget. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming out tonight. The show is uh, thanks to all of you and my jokes. Yeah, that, that wouldn't have happened otherwise. If I just called you saying, just come <laughs> on Wednesday to BIC. Why? Simply come. No. <laughs> you go have drinks later. <laughs> no, it doesn't work. Uh, but so nice, so nice to be here. And thank you for all of you to being here. And, oh man, I, I'm just so upset in today's day and time, right? Because last week, I put up a joke on Facebook. Right? And I put up a really, really interesting joke saying, as India's only blind comic, it's great because I can't see my competition. <laughs> and a girl got offended. And she replied, how dare you put up this comment? Because Sandeep Rao, I've been for your show and I know that you're not blind, you're partially blind. In fact, if anything, there's the girl called Nidhi Goyal in Bombay and she's completely blind. And if anyone has a right to be a blind comic in India and India's only blind comic, it's her, not you. Take down this post. <laughs> fucking... I got fucking furious, man. So I said, sorry. <laughs> and she replied going, huh? Because <laughs> social media is not used to hearing the word sorry. Everyone's like, fucking, don't show me, don't show me, don't show me. And then they'll hide behind their profile picture. <laughs> Hi. I'll hide behind the hashtag. It's the safest place right now. I didn't grow up in India with social media. If you were an asshole, you had to commit to being an asshole. If you went out and said, hey, bole maga. You'd be like, yaar, apa? Oh, shit. You had to commit. With social media, you can say what the hell you want and then, as I said, take down your profile, get blocked and do all these things. See, the thing is, our parents told us, fit in, be nice, say thank you to uncle, say sorry to auntie. Don't mean it. Who the fuck wants you to mean it? Just say it. They come home like, hi, Sandeep, hi, auntie, so good to see you at home. <laughs> Thanks. Instead, you're like, bitch, again, she came and took that last home puppy, you know, like... <laughs> But you had to say these words, man, because parents brought you up well in uh, 1990s India. You know, they did things where they're like, yeah, lie about the fact that you really feel bad <laughs> because you can fit into society. <laughs> That's what matters more than feeling about your own feelings. <laughs> so I actually got angry with this girl, not because she pointed out uh, the fact. I got angry with her because she actually put out what I wanted to say because I don't know what to call myself. I didn't want to call myself blind, but I couldn't spell the other words that define blind. So I said, blind, it's just easier. Because I can't call myself blind because I'm not fully blind. I'm partially blind. But in India, if I call myself partially blind, most uncles think I failed. <laughs> at being blind. <laughs> if I call myself partially sighted, they're like, oh, trying to be positive about a negative situation. <laughs> and if I say I'm visually impaired, they're like, oh, big words, huh? Ah, ah, ah. No, it is mental, man, because my mom and my dad from a young age said, Sandeep, be nice. Be nice, fit in, and society will not make sure that you are a person who will get picked out for your problems. So they want me to be a nice boy. They want me to fit in. So they sent me to a school when I was six years old to fit in. A school called Sophia's Girls High School. <laughs> First of all, S-O-P-H-I-A-S. <laughs> Sophia. Yeah. These pretentious fucks like Sophia. <laughs> I went to Sophia's, which was Kuwait. Sophia's is when they bloomed. After 13, they flowered because Sophia's. Sophia's. And my parents, be nice, 
Be nice to the nuns. And the nuns every day, be nice, otherwise God will punish you and he will send you to hell. And I was a naughty kid, basic kid. Man, I used to steal shoes, chase the nuns, fucking awesome, right? <laughs> and when I was in third standard, one day I woke up blind. And the nun came up to me and I said, Nun, I teach you, I can't see. See, I told you, God will punish you. I said, I really can't see. She's like, oh, really? <laughs> she was like, oh, fuck, this really a God? <laughs> <laughs> I used this to scare all my students. 30 batches, nothing happened. Fucking father. <laughs> and she was terrified, right? Like, what do you do? And then, you know, th th they told my mom, they were like, ma'am, your son is actually visually impaired, he's disabled. Maybe you should take him out of this class because in Sophia, Sophia's, we have a section for disabled people called the, as the name suggests, opportunity section. Right? This is what the disability section in Sophia's was called in the 1990s. They really hadn't seen the outside world. <laughs> right? They hadn't known the outside India. People are disabled, we call it opportunity. <laughs> I call it lack of opportunity section, I would have gone there. Right? <laughs> opportunity section. What do we do for fun? We'll push each other on wheelchairs. <laughs> Down the slope into the fucking pit. <laughs> opportunity. <laughs> like no glass ceiling, it's a fucking glass wall. Right? <laughs> opportunity section. So my mom said, no, no. My son, Sandeep, not disabled going to opportunity section. She doesn't speak like that, but... <laughs> Suddenly she became angry. <laughs> I will send my son to normal school. Get out of here, sister. And she put me into normal schools. But for normal schools to fourth standard, you had to write entrance exams. And like a boss, I fucking failed all of them. <laughs> so my mom's like, this guy, shit, what do we do? St. Joseph's, fucking rejected. Malayaditi, rejected. Clarence, <laughs> they didn't let me in. Yeah, that guy, oh, fuck, dude. <laughs> exactly. Clarence, I got rejected. <laughs> St. Germain's, I got rejected. So then my mom said, like, what do we do? Shit, he's really fucked, right? We don't get him to school. So she did the obvious thing. She's like, we will use influence. <laughs> you know your career is fucked in the fourth standard when you have to use influence, right? <laughs> you hear it nowadays. <laughs> hey, your job is there at Google or something. Influence. Fucking into Vidyani Ketan. I had to use influence. <laughs> my mom's like, we know the and Pai. If you don't let him in, he'll take your land away. Ma'am, he took it anyway. Oh. <laughs> so I got into that school. But you know, my mom realized very early on in age uh, that I was not a very good student. So she's like trying to divert my attention to different things. She's like, Sandeep, look at sports. Try sports as an option. And in so far as I got my first glimpse of athletics, right? Because I, I, if you've grown up in Bangalore, anywhere in the country, you know like the best athletes and the best runners come from Catholic schools. Because in all my school competitions, I lost to Catholic boys who ran because they taught them from a young age that if you don't run fast enough, the priest will catch you. Uh, so... <laughs> oh! <laughs> That's how they do 100 meters, right? So I learned from there. I was like, oh, cool, I can do something, I can run. And then my mom introduced me to this event called the Special Olympics. Have you heard of it? But I was so depressed when I saw it. Because the Special Olympics, I thought when I first saw it, was an event where they give medals depending on how disabled you are. Because all the golds were no hands, no legs. Silvers, one hand, one leg and one fucking ear. Not once did I see partially blind champion. So I asked my mom, what? I have no hope. She's like, start running. So I started into walls. Poof. One more disability, now you have hope. <laughs> but ironically, in my school in Vidyani Ketan, when I was in 10th standard, I won a medal in gold for running. Yeah, thanks. For the, for the 400 meters, strangely, right? For the 400 meters. It was actually 100 meters. <laughs> but I didn't stop running. And they felt really bad. Like, Sandeep, there's no priest. I'm like, but I can't. <laughs> but my mom, man, she's in the audience tonight. God bless her because she really protected me from a young age. She, she realized, right, this whole fucking, he can't get into any admission entrance exam at the fourth standard. He's running into walls. I got to protect him. Right? So 
So instead of sending me to a special needs school, she said, okay, in Vidyani Ketan, you go. Be normal, pretend to be normal. The community as Brahmins will not question you. So she decided to study for me. Fucking from fourth, she started taking notes, started doing biology diagrams. Fucking, she started doing handwriting classes, like redoing maths classes, going for projects. She'd go to state library, get all the beautiful fucking posters from the tourism department. My poster had nothing except posters. My project just had posters of Gummateshwara. The teacher's like, where's the content? I don't know. My mom did this. <laughs> Then she started getting competitive, right? Because she wrote notes. And all my birthday parties were not with hot girls, they were with girls who had the best notes. <laughs> my mother would be like, hey, Shweta, you have good notes. You're invited for today's birthday party. <laughs> You'll get pineapple and black forest. <laughs> hot chicks never, because they never fucking studied, right? They used to be so fast. <laughs> they used that fast card. We bloom too early, auntie. We go to like have nail polish. Hey, no notes. <laughs> Mom was my note-taking woman, right? She used to take my biology class from the longest time. My mom used to draw all the diagrams, right? So for the longest time, I didn't know the difference between a carnation and a uterus. <laughs> I was like, whoa, oh, it's okay. It's blooming. <laughs> Fucking amazing, what a carnation. Gifted my mom, hi. <laughs> I went to C-section. <laughs> Oh, and my mom. <laughs> my mom got a little aggressive with my classmates, right? Because every time she'd come to school to get notes, they'd all get really scared. They're like, they're blind guys, mom's come. <laughs> she was like, take the notes. <laughs> and then I remember her fighting for assistance in my ICSE board exams, right? She used to fight for me to get rights. And she went to the board, they fought to the board, fought to the principal. They're like, yes, madam, Mrs. Rao, we've got him what he needs. We've got him extra time during the board exams. The exam's three hours long, we've got him two hours more. And she's going, he doesn't know anything. <laughs> if three hours doesn't help, how the fuck will two more hours help him? <laughs> That's what she did, she really helped, man. And then I graduated, actually, I graduated from ICSE and ISC, and then I went to this place called Mahavir Jain College for a year, right? Yeah. <laughs> I hid behind my mother. I hid behind her like a boss. Right? I was like, Ma, they're calling me bad things. Right? She's like, oh, who's that? And when I did badly in exams in school as well, my mom would get angry with my classmates. She's like, hey, Shweta, <laughs> did you sabotage his notes? <laughs> Shweta, you bitch. <laughs> I'm like, Ma, she's my classmate, but she fucked up the notes, Sandeep. I said, this is my grades or your grades? <laughs> ah, correct. <laughs> So I did that Jane College thing for one year, right? I mean, all I remember from there is one by five samosas. <laughs> you take one and you divide. That's where I learned division, by the way. And then one day my mom's like, Sandeep, you know, you're just taking too much for granted. You're hiding behind us. You're not being independent. You're not being a person who you can be. You're not realizing your full potential. So uh, dad and I have decided to send you abroad. Huh? <laughs> to study. What's that? No, go abroad and study. I said, yeah, you'll come. No, 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 you are going alone to study. Where? Abroad. <laughs> Foreign. Because <laughs> my parents wanted me to get this thing, right? They probably had this thing going, something will happen, right? Something. Like it's that pushing point, that threshold, like something will break and he'll become a student, he'll become independent, he'll learn about the world. But they had a safety net going, worst case, at least he'll come back with an accent. <laughs> <laughs> so he won't be that dumb fuck child, right? We took to Bangalore club parties. Amma, kan kan sala, amma, kan amma. <laughs> at least he'll be like, hello, mommy, I can't see very well. Rather, poor pop, polish, eh? Hey? Fucking up your ass. See, <laughs> Estuan Chanaka, he speaks so well. <laughs> Aruna, your son. Amazing vocabulary. <laughs> He said, what? Cunt, so nice. So nice. <laughs> what is cunt? It's like, am I Mangalorean with a C? <laughs> Burnt with a C. <laughs> <laughs> so they sent me. And it was a wet dream in the 90s for every Indian parent to go to the UK. They were a child to go to Oxford, to Cambridge, to speak like this, to come back, not get a job. <laughs> <laughs> We all were there in Bangalore Club. Hello, how are you? Chirpy, chirpy. Ooh, up your bum. What's your name? My name is Paddy. You can call me Padmanabra. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing they knew. Just a fucking accent. I'm a product of that. 
Because my parents want to go, me to go to Oxford to Cambridge. Uh, this is me, no grades. So they got me into the University of Wales in Swansea. <laughs> You've been paid to laugh, fuck off. No, the University of Wales in Swansea is such a bad university, it, it's not even in the top five universities. In Wales. And they have two. <laughs> I'm terrified now. My mom's like, you have to go abroad, foreign. I'm like, well, where, where? Swansea, I've never heard of this. He said, what is Swansea? Ugly duckling Swansea. No, Swansea in Wales. Said, what the fuck is Wales? And they send me abroad, get a visa from Chennai, travel on Air India to London, go to the immigration booth. First time leaving my home country, leaving Bangalore, go up to the guy. He's like, hello, son, why are you here? I said, ooh, that sounds nice. I'm here, sir, for university. Which university are you going for, sir? I said, University of Wales in Swansea, sir. He went two, right? <laughs> this, this was my first glimpse of foreign education. <laughs> he went two. <laughs> so I, I actually went for a course in international relations and political science because someone said it's nice. I didn't know what it was. <laughs> someone said, he'll do it. I'm good in politics. <laughs> How I don't understand they, un they came to that conclusion, right? He can't see, he can only run, he's damn dumb. Politics! <laughs> Politics! He's destined to run a party. <laughs> My first class, I, I go there, they, you have to live in the dormitory and you have to go to these classes, these huge lecture halls. The students are all sitting and they have their uh, computers. Some of them have laptops, some of them have notepads. And the professor comes in, he goes, hello, boys and girls. My name is Professor Clive Pontrick. And over the course of the semester, we will try to understand the geopolitical crisis in the Middle East. Um, then he said these words which terrified me. Over the course of the semester, I would like your opinion. My opinion now. In my head, I'm like, bastard. My parents took loan. I went to Chennai in that heat for the fucking visa. Flew on Air India. Got spat on. For my opinion. Let me tell you how it works, sir. You give me opinion. I mug up opinion. <laughs> okay. Exam time comes, I vomit opinion. Because <laughs> in my family, you only have right to an opinion after you start earning salary. <laughs> Not when you've taken student loan. <laughs> Amma, I think the global warming... Hey, shut your fucking mouth. <laughs> okay, ma. It is your opinion. <laughs> it was mental. I was like, what the fuck? You? And then he said these things like, I, over the course of the semester, we will understand the idea of hegemony. <laughs> hegemony. <laughs> then we're going to understand through the form of writing original papers. Oh, original? What is original? I was calling Karnataka State Library. You have posters? <laughs> They're like, no. <laughs> and then he said, one day, I need in one week a 20-page paper about the geopolitical crisis as a result of the Iraqi oil shortage. Think for yourself. <laughs> fucking mad about thing, opinion thing. I was terrified. He said, you have to write this paper, otherwise you're going to fail the class. So I, uh, with my knowledge, went to Google <laughs> and typed in, Iraqi oil crisis, geopolitical fallout. And magically, a paper appeared. <sighs> I was like, wow, because I hadn't heard of plagiarism. So I like, fuck it. <laughs> Downloaded the paper, changed my name, and presented it to the professor. <laughs> Hello, professor. Here's my paper. <laughs> He's like, oh, this is not yours. I said, how do you know? He's like, I wrote this. <laughs> I like, boss, you wanted opinion, no? <laughs> I gave yours only. <laughs> Nicely edited, capitals, block marks, <laughs> italics. It was the first attempt at outsourcing. <laughs> you can't just blame me, you know. I, my mom studied for me, so I had no exposure how to study, how to think for myself. But in our generation, the entire country didn't want to think for themselves because we were taught to aspire to be on shows like Bone Vita Quiz Contest, Mastermind, 
where the more you can mug up the fucking boss you are. What's the capital of Ethiopia? Addis Ababa. Oh, fucking boss child. Never were we given the chance to think for ourselves. And when we were given the chance to think for ourselves, the questions were quite strange. Remember in school, we had those questions which went like, if Rahul leaves home at four, <laughs> and if Pooja leaves home at five, and there's a northeaster wind of 20 kilometers an hour, <laughs> and it's raining in Chirapunji, why is Pooja a slut? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I went to ICSC, so it was slut, but maybe SLC was too late. I don't know, just yeah. adapting, right? adapting. <laughs> but honestly, after the first, first semester, my whole family thought, that's it, he's coming back, dude. He has no hope there. I don't know, how will he manage? <laughs> but I managed because I found two of my loves. Drinking. <laughs> and the pursuit of white women. Yeah, that's right. Drinking gave me the confidence to be like, I don't know anything, but I learned a new tool called faffing. <laughs> you just fuck around. Yeah, I know everything. I need Baba. They're like, oh, my. Yeah. And then, you know, the white girl obsession started with this thing because, you know, we're very money minded, right? Parents have been taking a loan. See, something, one pound is 80 rupees, right? So my head is like, one pound is one white girl. If I sleep with one white girl, imagine the amount of respect I'll get. I go back to India with an accent and 80 rupees. <laughs> and I didn't know how to go about it. So I actually had a roommate who is my guru. He's my shisha and I still applaud what he did for me. He was this British guy whose name was Kush. Actually, Sri Lankan. Name was Kushal Navaratna. Okay. <laughs> but he called himself Kush. And he's like, oh, am I? Oh, my name is Kush. Kush. And I'm going to help you. Uh, you. You're from India, mate. Yeah, we're going to go out for the pub for a couple of beers, mate. You want to come join us, blokes? Blokes. <laughs> yeah, we're going to get some fucking points. We're going to get proper fucking smash, mate. Oh, you speak like a god. <laughs> Take me to your temple, Lord. <laughs> Oh, yeah, no worries, mate. Yeah, we're going to go get some proper fucking wank, mate. We're going to be like proper, yeah, sort of, there. <sighs> then I said, uh, Kush, uh, can you help me, man? I said, of course, mate. You're friends over here. You're from India, man. I'm from fucking Sri Lanka. It'll be all right. Yeah, we'll fucking be friends forever. Yeah, so all right. Proper sorted, mate. We're fucking friends, mate. No worries. I said, uh, Kush, I need to admit to you I'm a virgin and I want a girl. <laughs> oh, mate, you want to pull a bird? <laughs> Pull a bird. Uh. <laughs> Brahmin, don't want no bird. Don't go to your birds. <laughs> now, my, now you want to pull a bird. Well, you got to pull a bird. You first got to go snog a chick, and then you got to go to a nightclub, and then fucking pull a bird, and then you go back home and you shag her. Oh, so many words. Wow, <laughs> Kush. So, all right. What you got to do is first go to a nightclub, mate. When you go to a nightclub, the first thing you do to pull a bird is you get on the dance floor. And then you make eye contact with her. And I'm there really fucking, I'm fucked. <laughs> I'm like, Kush, I don't want to pull a bird. I'm wanting chicks. Oh, mate, what the fuck is I wanting chicks? Man, you can't come to my country and say, I'm wanting chicks, I'm wanting chicks, I'm wanting chicks. You come with us, blokes, you got to pull a bird, mate. I'm wanting chicks. You can't fucking say, wanting chicks, wanting chicks. I'm on the dance floor now trying to fucking do, and if you know anything about my eyes, to see anything, I have to look to the side. So if I look at a girl, I can't see the girl. To see the girl, I have to look to the side. So I'm like, mm, 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 mm. I'm wanting chicks, I'm wanting chicks. <laughs> and then the bouncer comes up to me. He's like, what are you looking at? And I was like, wanting chicks. And then he kicked me out. And I was like, oh, what the fuck, dude? I said, are you kicking me out because I'm blind? He's like, yeah. I said, okay, cool. At least I'm not brown. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. Warning chicks. But the whole time, Kush has run away. He's just gone somewhere. He's pulled a bird, <laughs> flown with the bird, landed with the bird, done things with the bird, feathers in the cap, right? <laughs> and I went back to Kush the next morning. I was like, Kush, where you left me, bro? He's like, oh my, you know, just, you know, fucking shagged a bird. I was like, this country and your obsession with birds is crazy, dude. Why are you doing so much things to birds? 
I, I, I kept following his things, right? Because he taught me things, how to speak with an accent. He taught me the difference between the pronunciation of V and W. I was like, vodka. <laughs> Whiskey. <laughs> oh, fucking A, mate. If you want to hang around me, Sandy, some ground rules. Eh? You got to pull a bird, you can't say wanting cheeks. <laughs> you got to say vodka. Say vodka. Vodka. <laughs> vodka. Vodka. <laughs> vodka, mate. Vodka, mate. Oh, fuck, yeah. <laughs> Taught me things. W, vegetable. No. <laughs> vegetable. Hey, nai, tarkari. Who's turkari, mate? I fuck you, sound making You could make turkari sound hot, mate. <laughs> oh, never, man. For two years, no luck with the birds. Then on my birthday one day, he said, oh, this is just depressing me, mate. I've been shagging a bird every night and you're just sitting there going, wanting ding chicks. <laughs> so, uh, he took me to this place, a very respected establishment in Swansea called Bunnies. And it was, uh, how do you put it politely? Uh, brothel. <laughs> and he goes, all right, tonight you're going to be a man and tonight you're going to discover what it means to be like a man. I said, yeah, bloke. <laughs> So the way it works is you sit down on a sofa and they have a ladies model in front of you and just to make it perfect, they have mood lighting, which is dark. <laughs> so all these ladies are modeling, going, hello, hello, hello. And I'm like, I can't see any of them, right? So I'm like, Kush, help me, dude. Look at my size, some, find someone appropriate. White, right, white girl. <laughs> One pound 80 rupees. 160 Sri Lankan. <laughs> Sri Lanka. <laughs> and he found me a girl. And then she came five minutes later and grabbed my hand. I looked up, she was a six foot two Nigerian woman. <laughs> so I'm just sitting there going, Ai, Awe Mbale, In the jungle, the mighty jungle, the lion sleeps tonight. <laughs> She's like, oh, this is not karaoke, this is a brothel. <laughs> <laughs> and then she grabbed my hand and took me. I remembered so far as how my mom took me away from school. I'm like, okay, ma, come here. But it was a brothel. <laughs> she takes me to the room and then she's, uh, this is the room. I am going to make you a man, big boy. <laughs> I'm like, hey, I am small, brown, Brahmin. <laughs> Not big boy. <laughs> okay, take off your clothes. Hey, I went to Sophia's. And I'm a man. So I was like, Chi. <laughs> you first. <laughs> and she's like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Wildebeest migration. <laughs> hey, Pompa, not in front of the kids. <laughs> and then she gets on the bed and how I finally got the balls to take off my clothes, standing there, because when you leave India for the first time to a foreign place, your mother gets you underwear. <laughs> so I am on the cusp of losing <laughs> little self-respect that I had <laughs> with Chewbacca over here, standing there in socks and those tan skin color VIP chedis. <laughs> oh! And she's like, come to bed and make me a woman, big boy. I'm like, oh, yes, I will. So I've taken my string and hung it up here. Don't put that shit in the way. Can't lasso that. <laughs> uh, and I remember what my mom told me. She's like, Sandeep, you're athletic, start running. So I had to run because she was six foot two. The bed was really high. I needed a run up. <laughs> Missed the bed. <laughs> Completely missed the bed. But I had watched a little bit of porn growing up, you know, friends, girls gone wild. So I knew what to do. <laughs> Second attempt, I'm on her and I'm going at it, guys. Going at it, fucking for my life. 30 minutes, I'm at it. And then she's like, okay, this has been fun. But I think it's time you put it in now. Okay. <laughs> Apparently, <laughs> the advantage of a small penis is that anything feels like a vagina. <laughs> Even your calf muscle. 
I'm like, flex. <laughs> and it was done before I knew it. And then she brings the bill. She's like, how would you like to pay? I had no money. So um, when I left India, my dad had given me this add-on emergency credit card. And as the name suggests, for emergency situations. This was an emergency. So I swiped 90 pounds. It was about 2 in the morning. So in Bangalore, it's early. So my dad gets his notification. He calls me. Hey, why do you swipe for 90 pounds at Bunny's? I said, Papa, haircut. <laughs> we didn't have Skype and all. So I didn't have to show him the haircut. He said, hey, what's wrong with the 90 pounds haircut? My mother and you have taken loans and all that nonsense. I'm like, oh, okay, okay. You know what? Fuck the bullshit. I lied to you. I've lied enough, but this is when I come clean. I was a virgin till now. Huh? <laughs> so I had to do it. And I had to sleep with this girl. And I went to a prostitute. And he's on the golf course with his friends. And he goes, Prostituta! Prostituta! Hora! Hora! Sulena! Sulena! I said, Pa, I'm so sorry if she was a black A black prostituta! African horror. Kari Sulena. <laughs> and his friends are like, Ram, what's happening? Prostitute. Horror. <laughs> I actually left my dad with a worse handicap than mine. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> but we, we spoke a couple of days after. I was like, I'm so sorry for what I did. And he's like, I don't do all these stupid things and all that. I said, sorry that, you know, she was a prostitute. Black prostitute. <laughs> if it was white, he'd be like, ah, ah, it, huh? <laughs> Did you uh, swipe it, then wipe it? <laughs> There's some things money can't buy. <laughs> this is not one of them. <laughs> But then he said the most amazing thing which my dad told me. That's when I realized he's cool. He's like, idiot, I gave this as an emergency card. Don't use cards for these transactions. Use cash. My auditor will see this. And he'll ask me. <laughs> and I have to say, prostitute. <laughs> I don't know how I manage Wales, man. It was really interesting. I learned nothing. And then finally, I graduated. I don't know how. With a degree in political science. Because I just forgot about international relations. <laughs> so I've graduated now. I've got... Graduation certificate from the school of Kush. I've got the ability to drink and I've got an accent. So I come back to India, all set. Yeah, to take over Bangalore as Kush Junior. <laughs> I slept with a girl. No one knew that she was a black. You don't need that much information. And in my head, I'm like, I got light. In my head, I got light. And they're like, oh, wow. And what was the weirdest thing is I came back to India with an English accent from Wales and no one seemed to care. I was like, hello, mate. They're like, oh, wow. Something was something good. I was like, cheers, yeah, cheers, cheers. <laughs> no one seemed to care. And I just continued doing my thing because I was like, now, you know, I've gone abroad. I've got the certification, the validation to be an international student. Continued partying like a rock star. And then one day, a friend's like, dude, don't do alcohol, man. Grow up. You're 23, now 24. Do some drugs. <laughs> like, ah, oh. like ganja. Come on, man, grow up, do some proper drugs, some cocaine. You want to do some lines? I'm like, bro, I can't read lines. How do I do lines? <laughs> Come on, bro, we do some coke. I said, okay, let's do some coke. Yeah, let's do some coke. So we went, and he's like, oh, this is how we do it, bro. We'll roll some nice notes. And I'm like, I have pounds. He's like, fucking man, doesn't matter. I've got a new thousand rupee note. <laughs> And he's like, yeah, the pound note's dirty. I'm like, oh, like our rupee notes are clean. And he's like, I bought this really good stuff. It's one gram for 9,000 rupees. And he takes me to a stall in a public bathroom, puts the commode down, go and cut the line there. I'm like, oh, hygiene is your problem. <laughs> he's rolled the note. He's like, okay, Sandeep, you pull it from left to right, and you come out feeling awesome. <laughs> I go into the bathroom. I don't know what the fuck is a commode, but what the fuck is a line. All white. <laughs> Now, I can't go out with an accent going, oh, mate, I can't fucking follow the line, mate. So I'm like, okay, it's not anything. <sighs> Come on, going, oh, mate, that's some great stuff, mate. He's like, yeah, no damn good. And then he went in to finish his line. He's like, Sandeep, your line's still here. <laughs> oh, shit. Was that Columbia Pure? <laughs> or Shweta Shata? <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> yeah, that's what happens if you don't give me notes. <laughs> My mom got furious, you know. She's like, what the hell is this kind of behavior? You come back, we've spent so much on your education. Look at your sister. I was like, back again. Because my sister was my elder sister, and my parents wanted her to be kind of my role model, but she was always a cooler one, right? Like, she was a good student, she was a good friend, she was a good daughter, she was a good person in studies, she was a good athlete, she was a house captain, and then she had more friends, she did more things in life which were proud uh, for my parents, and then I, I was like, fuck, I can't live up with this girl ever. So when I went to Wales and came back, I thought at least, okay, now I have Wales, I'll be cooler than my sister. But no, she's fucking gotten better. She's got a job, she has a salary, she's giving money to the house, she's got married, she has a baby. And I'm coming back more and more drunk with, fucking accent. Bleh. I'm like, I can never be this sister. <laughs> and then one day she got divorced. And I was like, fuck yeah! Oh. <laughs> fucking finally! <laughs> I... Jumped and partied like a boss. I was like, Kush, yeah, guess what? My my sister said, oh. <laughs> <And I went. laughs> Awful brothers things, right? Brother was like, can you be there for me? I'm like, no, not today. <laughs> Maybe in a few years <laughs> when I'm doing the show. <laughs> now, it, it, it was good. You know, it was good that my, my, my sister and I, we have built up our rapport now. She's actually doing well. Because what happened was, even though she did get divorced in the Brahmin community, that's the worst thing to do. Literally a year after, she got a job at Google. <laughs> and Brahmins, if they give, forgive you for anything, <laughs> they'll forgive you if you work at Google. <laughs> Three-time divorce, doesn't matter. Can't cook, doesn't matter. Can't travel alone, doesn't matter. Google. <laughs> Just like, Yahoo. <laughs> it means a lot for them. So my sister and I spoke about this. We came to terms with it. She's a really good friend of mine now. But I was realizing that, you know, I was going into this downward spiral because it's depending too much on people and blaming people for what I'm not. It became a bit of an issue. And about five years back, I got diagnosed with a wife. And um, <laughs> that made me realize that it's really important to kind of stand up for who you are because I'm taking care of someone in my life now. So I went for this thing uh, because I was hit by these things called anxiety and depression. Uh, pretty cool, if you should try it. Uh, so I went for therapy, right? I've, you've heard of therapy. Everyone's doing it now. It's pretty hot, yeah. So I told my dad, I'm like, wow, I'm feeling really sad some kind of things called depression and anxiety, I'm going to go for therapy. And my dad's born in the 40s, right? And he's like, therapy, ah. <laughs> hey, you idiot, you're mad or what? Go running, have something, milk in the morning, some juice, go exert some energy, what? Depression, all will go. Therapy, ah, throw, you're mad or what? I was like, oh shit, you don't ever understand me. So I was recommended very highly to this therapist and I go sit in the session and she sits me down. She's like, Sandeep, don't apologize for who you are. Don't explain what you are. Don't explain because I can see the pain in your eyes. I can see the hurt. I can see the regret. I can see the guilt. I can see everything that you are right now and what has made you here. And we can sort this out because the first step is being aware and the first step is admitting what you are. So over the next four sessions, we will get on the road to becoming better. So please go out and schedule the next four sessions with my secretary. I felt so strong. Felt so empowered that there is hope. I can be myself finally. So I go to the secretary, I'm like, this lady wants me to um, come for four more sessions. She's like, no problem, sir, here's the invoice. <laughs> it was 10,000 rupees, right? And I said, not bad, four sessions. No, sir, for today. <sighs> On the car ride back, I became my dad. <laughs> no matter what therapy or depression, I fucking go for and run and I'll fucking have some juice to wake up in the morning, have some, no matter what therapy, throw and I'm because <laughs> that's what therapy does. <laughs> if it's expensive, oh, yeah, your problems are gone. <laughs> and you'll believe whatever they say. But then I found a cheaper form of therapy through this thing called MindFit, right? 10,000 rupees one session. This was 800 rupees. You can get 10 sessions for 8,000. <laughs> Fuck, I was like, yeah. But the problem when cheaper therapy is that you get bored very easily because it's cheap. <laughs> So first session helpful, second, third, fourth, fifth helpful. After the sixth, you start making up problems. Just to see if they're qualified. <laughs> Just to check. Can't be this cheap, bro. 600 bucks Uber, 800 mental health. What the fuck? Or another 900, we throw a rope in. <laughs> 
just leaving the window open in case <laughs> you're running out of your package <laughs> last session <laughs> fly fly <laughs> but now everyone's depressed so it's cool <laughs> it's fucking it's like going for a sale like oh you also bought cargo pants <laughs> i also have depression i can't wake up in the morning without feeling like i'm going to kill myself then do no <laughs> feel like that feel <laughs> in india though as a guy who's disabled i realized that suicide is not required <laughs> because it's easier for me to get killed than kill myself <laughs> fucking if i tried to do something i would be like no 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 please don't sandeep we'll look after you if i walked on the footpath poof, just fucking fall down a hole how old comedian who was suicidal die he wasn't suicidal pothole <laughs> So uh, that's the thing which therapy is done. Everyone has a problem, and everyone thinks their problem is bigger than the other person's problem, which is fantastic, right? That's why we have Facebook. <laughs> my problems, my problems. And what I don't like about it is that when people try to use that kind of social media power to kind of leverage someone else's problem for more views, because a few years back this boy committed suicide in Bombay by jumping off a five-star hotel window and he killed himself. It was really sad because it was caught on camera, right? and he went this facebook live saying oh my god i can't handle life here's a five steps to how to kill yourself and he jumped off and it was really upsetting and the next day everyone on social media really really sad to see the suicide where this boy jumped off by the way if you like my blog on suicide please check it out on this link https myblog.com/suicide is bad and next day someone else said check out my video which is really bad i'm like how can you use someone else's mental hurt and pain to leverage your social media views really really piss me off because i was going to bombay the next week So I called up the hotel, and I was like, hey, "You guys have a discount?" By <laughs> not that room, but I'm not leveraging anything. I'm being practical. Nine <laughs> hundred rupees a session. Come on, can't be like, "Oh, sir, we stick by principles." It's twelve thousand now. It's become a suite. <laughs> See you now. <laughs> Now but I I, lo I love the fact that a lot of people have got the confidence to talk now because of social media right they, they don't have to be confident and say oh my god I have to stand by my opinion they can just say shit because right? I met a few people through this course of work in fact the other day I was approached by an activist who that's a fucking interesting kind of people <laughs> and uh, she said it's so hard for me to be an activist especially in this space about veganism because you know Sandeep we feel so marginalized and it's so hard for us to be taken seriously we're always ridiculed I say yeah that's kind of the escape of the environment right I mean it's pretty hard for disabled people as well yeah but it's not the same <laughs> uh, okay go on explain <laughs> no no because see, you disabled people didn't choose to be disabled so you have to deal with it we chose to be vegan so we have to fight for what we believe in <laughs> in my head i'm coming out of the joking life is tough for me life is tofu for you <laughs> break the tension break the because i thought to myself what's the other example i can use to explain to you guys what she said right basically what she was saying is like greta dunberg going to a gay guy okay and saying see i made a choice to be an activist but because you didn't choose to be gay it's easier for you oh like, fuck what a logic i almost believed it i was like yeah man i have it easy i have it damn easy <laughs> Because everyone thinks their problem is harder, but what I've realized over the course of living 29 years with this disability is that you know what, everyone is marginalized. But as disabled people, we have certain advantages being marginalized. Because an, as an activist or as a gay person, if you fail in life, you're still a failure. You're a loser. If I fail in life, I'm an inspiration. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I get paid to be a failure <laughs> because people have that long story in India of using the Papa card. He can't see Papa. No one will you hear going, "Oh, she's vegan, Papa." No. <laughs> she's coming home for lunch. She's vegan. Are you a Papa for me? <laughs> Papa. You heard that word, Papa. <laughs> in in Tamil it's pavam hindi bechara english poor thing punjabi honey sing you've heard these words right the the dead tunuk 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 oh pa pa words nahi aaya that's the limit of my hindi okay 
Aber man das so fahrt. Papa. No, but this is the thing which upsets me. To be inspiring. Dude, a guy from a college called me up, an MBA university. He's like, Mr. Rao, can you come to our college and inspire us? I'm like, you're mad old bastard. <laughs> you heard any of my jokes? <laughs> Listen, how about you develop your own disability and inspire yourself? <laughs> It's easier, trust me. But Mr. Rao, we have a budget we'll pay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I will be on my way. <laughs> Credit card? <laughs> So, my friend actually, who I have a couple of disabled friends, um, and I asked this guy, so what's this whole inspiration bullshit? He's like, Sandeep, you're an idiot for not using this as a marketing opportunity. I said, what, you guys are into this shit as well? He's like, dude, we're disabled, right? <laughs> not retarded, right? <laughs> so I said, what do you do? He's like, you go for these corporate things where you want to be inspired and inspiring them. You do something stupid, like, see, I have cerebral palsy, so I go there and people are like, oh my God, he's in a wheelchair. Fuck, we're already like, shit, we feel so bad about ourselves and that we have privilege. And I said, what do you do then? He's like, then you write something which is a poem or something. I said, are you good as a poet? He's like, fuck, you're mad or what? I said, give me an example. Kush, part two. <laughs> said, okay, I'll give you an example. So he said, I write a poem like this, going, I like listening to Halsey because I've got cerebral palsy. <laughs> I like to climb a mountain, but because I'm in a wheelchair, I'm sitting in a, next to a fountain. <laughs> Every time I look at her, my heart breaks. No, not really. I've got cerebral palsy. It shakes. <laughs> I was like, dude, that's such a shit poem. He's like, you know that, I know that. They don't know that. <laughs> you go there, say this shit, they give you a standing ovation. I'm like, fuck, how does this shit work? He's like, because, dude, as I said, we are disabled, they are retarded. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's the problem, you can't use the word retarded. Because the PC brigade's out, right? Political correctness. You can't say a word like retarded, you have to say mentally challenged. You can't say runner, you have to say wall challenged. All I like to say to political correct people is that, guys, listen, it's fine to use whatever word you want, but it'll be nicer if you can actually do something about it, right? So be like, oh my God, he's hearing impaired. Can you explain to him? No, it's just the right word to use in the situation. <laughs> Sensitization of the situation. I'm like, help him. Huh. That involves work. <laughs> I don't get it when I said the other day I'm blind. Someone's like, Sandeep, you're visually impaired. Don't you dare marginalize yourself to that label. <laughs> No more fucking sorry, bitch. So I'm going to make my point, right? So I said, listen, okay, it's fine. What's the word then? She said, you know, you are a person with a disability. I said, oh, really? The words just changed, right? Handicap. <laughs> That's my dad, Papa, after that story. <laughs> then there's disabled. Then there's person with disability, people with disability. Then suddenly they dropped this new one a couple of years back. It's like a new track from Kanye. <laughs> Alter abled. You fucks, we're not transformers, okay? <laughs> we don't change. We're born this way. <laughs> What is alter able, dude? Like, if I was in a wheelchair and visually impaired, juggling and doing cartwheels at the same time, I'm not alter able, I'm talented. <laughs> Do you know who is alter able? Oh, those chicks in Thailand putting ping pong balls out of their fucking vaginas. <laughs> That, if anything, is an alter ability. They were women, they grew a penis, but they took it off to put ping pong balls and beer bottles. Hi, Nikan. Hi, Ninakan. That is alter able, not me, dude. All I can do is inspire. I am blind, that's why you are sitting next to my mind. That's I'm, I'm stuck there. You have come for my show. So now I don't know how to rhyme anymore. Because Black, no, more, more. Hey, thanks. Yeah. Dude, I'm blind, not retarded. I just, he's clapping. How dumb do you think I am, man? He's like, he's thought, that's it. The fact that he's taken a mic and come on the stage, Nobel Prize for ability. <laughs> I don't know if they have one, they should. 
But I love it. I love the assumptions people make, right? Like, oh my God, you know, blood disability, people alterable. But another assumption is people think that all disabled people are friends. <laughs> the confidence. They're like, Sandeep, uh, your mother said you can't see. You know my cousin is uh, deaf. <laughs> That's the only sign language. <laughs> I mean, how can you make that arrogant statement, right? Just because we're disabled doesn't mean we're all the same people. <laughs> and more importantly, I could barely learn English. Fuck Braille. Do you think I'm going to make the effort to have disabled friends to learn sign language? <laughs> how to be sensitization? Not even a word. See, this means my wheels <laughs> didn't fucking work out. <laughs> Sensitive. Edit that shit, man. And sensitized. <laughs> Kush, you bastard. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't understand. And people expect that. They're like, Sandeep, you know, you should join us. Because these, there's a new thing that there's activists on one side. Other side are the woke people. The ones who just think they're uber fucking in every group. Like, right? they know the lingo of the gays. They know the lingo of the LGBTQ1 plus 3 to the power of 5th minus 2. <laughs> when I saw the first article about LGBTQ, I'm like, Amma, there's a maths problem here. And my mom's like, hey, Shweta, you bitch! <laughs> Come and help my son. <laughs> and my dad's like, Kari Sulena. <laughs> Did someone call a Sule? Kari Sule. <laughs> people think that all disabled people are nice. In fact, I had a couple of drinks with people. They're like, oh my God, Sadeep, it's so funny. And they drop joke. See, if you're dropping a joke about a blind person, at least do a good joke. This girl I'm having a video, she's like, oh, you didn't see that coming. <laughs> I said, neither did your mom, that's why you're here. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Hashtag fires. <laughs> it's like, how can you say that? I thought you were nice. Why? <laughs> Tell me why you thought I was nice, ma'am. Because you're blind. How does that make me nice? You're disabled. You're repeating the same thing in a different fucking alphabet. <laughs> How does it make me nice? No, we just assume that all disabled people are nice. But why? Because you're disabled. <laughs> I said, have you met this girl? She's an activist vegan. She has very good logic like yours. <laughs> very good. She started a university in logic. <laughs> no, no, no. You could, admission, no brains required. Just go there with hashtags and a fucking school bag. And I realize that's how people do. They, they, they make us all into labels, right? Either you're a straight man or you're a gay man. Either you're a disabled man or you're a gay man. There's no more personality. <laughs> no, in India, you can't be gay and disabled. They don't allow that. <laughs> don't bend over, sir. Wheelchair is coming. <laughs> okay. I'm not nice. I, 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 for the longest time, tried to be nice, but I've realized that, you know, I only be nice because my parents have given me so much to look forward to and they've given me so much support. But sometimes I lose the shit, right? Because I, there's a breaking point. Like, when I travel, I need little assistance, but not too much. But every time I travel, I end up getting into a fight with the airline. Because they try to convince me, I need a wheelchair. And I try to convince them, I need an upgrade. Every time they're like, Mr. Rao, you need a wheelchair. I'm like, eyes working, not working. Legs are fine. <laughs> they're like, stop with the wheelchair. And finally, they put me in a wheelchair. It was in Dubai, the airline called Emirates. They put me into a wheelchair and they said, sir, you have to go. It's protocol. You'll be pushed to the gate by this lovely lady. And it was a lady who came to push me, covered from head to toe, in a burqa. And I'm like, this is fucking pointless. Because I can't see where I'm going. And neither can this woman. I mean, it's great progress for women's rights, but no movement for me. She starts pushing. She's like in circles. She's like, I feel very bad for you that you are blind. I'm like, why do you have a Russian accent? She's like, it's your joke. I said, good point. 
Then I'm like, oh, now it's time for back and forth. I'm like, I feel very bad for you that you are a woman in Muslim country. She's like, touche, high five. I miss completely. We both have. <laughs> so she's pushing me now. She's we're getting on somewhere. And as she's pushing me, I suddenly hear this electric motor going off. And I suddenly am overtaken by a guy on a motorized wheelchair. Just like this. <laughs> And he looks back and goes, ah, 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 ah. I'm like, fuck. How many medals has that cunt won, right? <laughs> but then I felt really bad when I had that thought because in my head, my mom said, be nice. Be nice. Oh, but when he laughed, that extra laugh, ah. I was like, fuck <laughs> being nice, the race is on. So I look back at her, I'm like, push faster, bitch, we need to win rest. Push faster. She's like, why do you have Russian accent? I said, my joke. <laughs> now she's pushing. <laughs> she's like, I cannot do it anymore. It is Ramadan, I have not eaten, I'm very hungry, I'm very tired. I'm like, fucking, you also have problems. Excuses. It was like a bad car chase from the Fast and the Furious, you know? She was fasting. I was fucking furious. <laughs> and then finally, she, she pushes me to the, the gate. A few days have passed. But, um, <laughs> but this guy's still there. <laughs> boom, boom. Writing his poem. <laughs> Take some time. All right. He had extra time. <laughs> I think his mom also fought for extra time. The gate. <laughs> he needs three hours extra to write his poem. <laughs> Ma'am, it's an airport. It doesn't matter, we just need equality. <laughs> then she parks me in front of him, like as though we're all friends. <laughs> and she was like, oh, there's a guy in wheelchair, you are blind, you must be knowing him. <laughs> so she parks me, but now this guy's getting cocky because he looks at me and goes, ah! I'm like, fuck. He said, ah, I won the race, asshole. Oh, that hurt, man. Years of fucking failing and that hurt when my fellow disabled person said, you lost. So I looked him back straight in the eye, partially. <laughs> and I said, you might have won the race, asshole. But I won life and I got up and I walked away. <laughs> straight into a fucking wall. <laughs> No one's nice. We've all got an asshole in us. The problem with us disabled people is no one takes us um, as assholes because we try all the time to pretend to be nice. And we do pretend to be nice because we never know when we're going to need your help. <laughs> it's always like, thank you, <laughs> sorry. Because in case steps come and we're like, oh, fuck, oh, shit. And inside you're like, this piece of shit, fuck you. The problem why no one takes us seriously as assholes is also because we don't have a good brand ambassador in our community. There are a lot of bad men and bad women, right? There's Trump, there's Modi, there's, there's O.J. Simpson, there's Bill Cosby, there was Hitler. Who do we have? Helen Keller. <laughs> TV wonder. The most asshole thing he did was he called a girl to tell her that he loved her. <laughs> I just can't just say I love you. What an asshole. <laughs> Nothing. Absolutely zero representation. And that's why the day when I read, not really, but heard about Oscar Pistorius, I was liberated. <laughs> because the Blade Runner, an athlete, a celebrity, fucked up. And you know what Oscar Pistorius proved to the world? That we're disabled people. Man, we can fit in. We can be normal. We can succeed. We can be inspiring. And yet, we can be fucking assholes. Thank you. Good night. Tonight, throw that thing from left, right, side to side. Oh.
Music bumping 